Welcome to the periodicals room. We have current and historical periodicals here, art, history, literature, social sciences. We have a huge general interest collection, daily newspapers, things from just all over the world. Women's fashion from India, where you want to read a scholarly publication about, you know, T.S. Eliot. Um, you could get all of that here. The DeWitt Wallace Periodical Room was named for DeWitt Wallace, who founded Reader's Digest in the 1930s. And he used the periodicals room and the collection to you know, create his, um, his magazine. So he'd sit there day after day, reading through and creating his condensed articles, publishing his magazine. If you go into the periodicals room now, you'll see a list of about 200 popular titles. You know, Vogue and Brides and New York Times and all the Time Out New York, all those kinds of things. But then there's all the other thousands of periodicals where you have to request. So you come to the reference desk, you fill out a call slip and then we go to the stacks. We're underneath Bryant Park right now in the Bryant Park stack extension where the majority of current periodicals are shelved. We have 4,000 or 5,000 print subscriptions and then electronically we have 60 or 70,000 online. We have zines. A zine is basically a handmade publication generally published out of love rather than out of commercial interest. These are some of the more popular zines that we have. Put an egg on it um, is a zine about how to eat anything basically with an egg on it. Mineshaft, which is where R. Crumb has been publishing a lot of his work over, over many years and people come in to look at that. We have political newsletters all across the spectrum. Stormtrooper Magazine, Conservative Chronicle, John Birch Society, and then as we move over to the left, Strike Magazine from the UK, Rain and Thunder, which is a radical feminist journal. The other really wonderful thing about the periodicals reading room, in addition to its amazing collections of periodicals, are these murals that you see around the entire room. These murals were done by the New York muralist Richard Haas, completed in 1983, and they each are depicting newspaper and publishing houses at the turn of the century, at the time that the library was built. I think the idea is to provide as much access and to give people the whole choice of what's out there and to be a place that people know they can come to learn about politics or they want to know what's going on in their country that they came from and feel home and, and connect. Time, Newsweek, Vogue. Brides, the New York Times, Earth First, Resist, Ladies Home Journal, Courier de la Sera, Frankfurter Allgemeine, El Universal, Time Out New York, The Washington Post, Playboy, 6x6, A Public Space, Paris Review, Dads at Home.